Howdy, it's Kyle talking about Oklahoma. In this video, I'll be discussing various aspects of the geography of the state. I'll be talking about the physical landscape, the climate, cities, economic indicators such as the companies that are headquartered there, the industries that drive the economy, agriculture, manufacturing, just the overall economic health of the state, as well as cultural aspects such as music and food. So if you want to learn more about the Sooner State, this is the video for you. Oklahoma sits right in the middle of the country. It ranks 20th in terms of its size, and it ranks 28th in terms of its population. There are about exactly 4 million people that live there. It puts it right behind Oregon and just in front of Connecticut. The capital is Oklahoma City, which is the easiest capital in the country to remember. With a population of about 670,000 people, it's the 26th largest city in the country. Oklahoma County, where it's located, has about 800,000 people, and it's the 80th most populous county in the country. And the Oklahoma City metropolitan area has about 1.5 million, which ranks at 42nd. It follows a trend that you see throughout the country. Cities that are both state capitals and the home to a major university have seen a lot of growth in recent years. So whether you're talking Austin, Texas, Raleigh, North Carolina, Denver, Colorado, Columbus, Ohio, Nashville, Tennessee, or Oklahoma City, these are all cities that have the state capital there, but also a major university in town or nearby. In the case of Oklahoma City, the major university is about a half an hour south in Norman, but it's still a part of the metro area. Just like in many other major cities, there's a lot of population growth in the heart of downtown. So people are moving to condo complexes or apartments that are right downtown. Younger folks like that kind of excitement being right in the heart of the city. They're going to pay a lot more per square foot, but you are going to be closer to the action. There are some pretty interesting neighborhoods in the city. There's been some gentrification in recent years, and that's pretty common throughout the U.S. So that's either a positive or a negative, depending on your perspective. One thing you'll notice when you look at pictures of the downtown skyline is that one enormous skyscraper that looks really out of place. It's kind of weird to have a New York City-sized skyscraper right in downtown Oklahoma City, especially when there aren't really any other tall buildings that come anywhere close to it. Another interesting quirk about the city is it's one of only two state capitals in the country where the capital building itself is not downtown. It's about two miles northeast of the city center, so Pretty much every state, the state capital is right there amongst all the major businesses and the high rises if it's a big city. But in Oklahoma, it's not downtown. The second largest city in the state is Tulsa. has a population of just over 400,000, makes it about the 48th biggest city in the country. The Tulsa metropolitan area is the newest entry into the 1 million club. It has just barely over 1 million people, which makes it the 60th largest U.S. metro. In my opinion, Tulsa is kind of an underwhelming city, especially considering its size. And it's not that it's horrible, it's that you don't get a huge return on your city investment for putting up with all the traffic and crime. So you don't really get a huge art scene or a music scene, a lot of big nightlife stuff going on. So you put up with all the negatives of cities, but don't get all the positives. The third largest city in the state is significantly smaller. It's Lawton, with about 90,000 people in the southern part of the state near the Texas border. Now, this is a pretty boring and bland place, but considering its size, and it's in Oklahoma, it's kind of to be expected. It's not that different than the town I'm from in California. It's pretty similar in terms of size and culture. Now, I want to talk about some of the physical geography aspects of the state. When you first think of Oklahoma, you might very well think of this. Flat or rolling hills, kind of brown, featureless prairie, nothing too exciting. And most of the state would be classified as prairie, but you might not think of this. The southeastern part of the state is very beautiful. It's green. You've got the Wasata Mountains right there. You have several peaks over 2,500 feet, which is pretty high for this part of the country. The scenery is very beautiful. I've been hiking and camping there many times. It's a spot that I go to quite a bit when I'm on my road trips. I just like the area there. It's just nice and wilderness. There are no national parks in the state, but there are some really nice state parks and a couple of wilderness areas as well. Something else that might be surprising about the state is that the extreme southeastern corner of the state is home to alligators that occur naturally in the wild. So when you think of alligators, you're probably going to think of the states that border the Gulf Coast, the Carolinas, and Georgia. But you might not think of Oklahoma as being a state with alligators, but they're there. The highest peak in the state is Black Mesa with just under 5,000 feet. It's at the extreme western end of the Panhandle. If you're someone that likes to visit the highest peak in each state, this one is not that difficult to get to, and the scenery is actually pretty cool. A couple of interesting side notes about the panhandle is that there are several states that do have a panhandle, but none of them actually look like pans. <laughs> Oklahoma is really the only one that does, so I couldn't really find where the term panhandle came from in terms of geography, but it had to be Oklahoma, right? Because none of the other states, Texas, Florida, Idaho, Maryland, they don't look like a panhandle, but Oklahoma's does. 
Something else pretty interesting about the Panhandle is that Cimarron County, which is at the western end of the Panhandle, is the only county in the country that borders counties from five states. So of course, Oklahoma, but also Texas, Kansas, Colorado, and New Mexico. If you really want to throw somebody off, tell them you're going to go visit an area right along the Oklahoma-Colorado border. Now I want to talk about the climate of the state. You think about the climate of Oklahoma, you'll probably think about severe thunderstorms and tornadoes first, which is fair because Oklahoma has more tornadoes per square mile than any other state in the country. Texas always leads the country in number of tornadoes, but it's such a huge state that's going to happen. But Kansas and Oklahoma always fight for who's got the second most, but because Kansas is a much larger state in terms of area, Oklahoma does have the most per square mile. And this is also where you get a ton of the huge tornadoes. You get a lot of EF4s and EF5s because in this part of the country, you have the warm, moist air from the Gulf of Mexico colliding with the cold, dry air from the Arctic right in the middle of the country. So the Great Plains is where you get all those huge tornadoes. And Oklahoma, again, has the most per area. But the climate of the state isn't just severe thunderstorms and tornadoes. The summers are pretty hot and humid. Of course, not as bad as the southeast, but hotter and more humid than you might expect. The falls are very nice there. Winters actually get pretty cold. Snow is reasonably common throughout the state. You're not going to get huge accumulations like you get in the upper Midwest or anything, but you do get some snow and it does get some pretty cold temperatures. So now I want to talk about some of the economic aspects of the state. The state's GDP is just over $200 billion per year, which makes it the 29th largest economy in the U.S., but it is the 28th most populous state. So whenever a state has a lower percentage of the GDP, and its percentage of the population, it's not quite pulling its weight all the way, but it's not that far behind. So Connecticut is the one state that has less people in Oklahoma, but a larger GDP. The state also ranks 31st in GDP per capita, so it's not quite as poor as the Southeast, but it's also not as well off as the Midwest or the Northeast. In terms of the state's economy, it is heavily dependent on the energy sector, primarily oil and natural gas. That pretty much runs the state. Almost one quarter of all the jobs in the state are with oil or natural gas. The three biggest companies in the energy sector in the state are Devon Energy, Williams, and Chesapeake, which is an interesting name for an Oklahoma-based company, but these are the three biggest players in the state. And that huge skyscraper in downtown Oklahoma City is the Devon Energy Tower. But it isn't all just about energy. There's also a huge aviation sector there as well. Tinker Air Force Base outside of Oklahoma City is the number one base in the country for aircraft maintenance and repair. American Airlines has their repair and maintenance facility in Oklahoma City as well. And I'm pretty sure there's a strong correlation between that and also having Tinker Air Force Base there because you got the Air Force guys that know what they're doing right there. And you got American Airlines taking advantage of the fact you do have all these Air Force personnel that know how to repair planes. But there really aren't that many large companies located in the state that aren't part of the energy sector. Some of the biggest companies in the state that are non-energy include Hobby Lobby Stores, Love's Travel Centers, Sonic Drive-Ins, and Mid-First Bank, which is pretty common in the south central part of the country. So the state is very dependent on the energy sector, but there is one drawback to it. Oklahoma is now one of the most at-risk states for earthquakes, and this is not where naturally occurring earthquakes are coming on. There's, they're man-made earthquakes due to the fracking and the injection into the ground. But Oklahoma isn't really prepared for earthquakes. It's prepared more for high winds. And the types of building materials that are used for high winds are the exact opposite ones you want for earthquake protection. Brick is fantastic for high wind. It's what you want to be in if there's a big windstorm coming. But it's the absolute worst material for earthquakes. You think about Oklahoma City, they've got Brick Town, which is the main part of town for nightlife and entertainment kind of stuff, a lot of great restaurants and bars, but it's Brick Town. And a few years back, there was a 5.8 earthquake that hit northeast of there. It did some pretty serious damage to brick buildings. So if that were to happen in Oklahoma City, it'd do a tremendous amount of damage. But for the time being, the energy sector's pros outweigh the cons, but I hope it won't take a huge earthquake hitting Oklahoma City before they really do something about it. But for right now, the trade-off is pretty fair. So now I want to talk about the agriculture of Oklahoma, and Oklahoma ag is largely dependent on livestock. It's fourth in the country for overall cattle, with only Texas, Nebraska, and Kansas having more, but it's second in the country for beef cattle, with only Texas having more. It's also ninth in the country for total number of hogs, and 13th in the country for total number of chickens, so Oklahoma is a very important player in livestock. But Oklahoma ag isn't just livestock, it's also seventh in cotton, and it's ninth in wheat. Historically, it's been about fourth or fifth in wheat, but 2018 was a really bad year, and now fewer farmers are planting it, but it's still ninth in the country, so it's a very important state in terms of wheat production. So now I want to talk about the taxes of the state. There's a 5% state income tax, which makes it right in the middle at number 25, 
has a pretty high 8.9% sales tax, which makes it sixth highest in the country, but it does have a pretty low property tax at number 33, although it does have the third highest property insurance rates in the country. But overall, the tax burden in Oklahoma is pretty average. So now I want to discuss some of the people and culture of the state. And the state kind of has a dubious history in terms of its statehood. If you look back at the Indian Removal Act of 1830, this is what led to the Trail of Tears. This is when the federal government uprooted what were called the five civilized tribes from the southeast and forced Marsham into the Indian Territory, which would later become Oklahoma. The five tribes that were uprooted were the Muscogee Creek, the Cherokee, the Chickasaw, Choctaw, and the Seminole. And all five of these were removed from the southeast and given land in Oklahoma. But shocking surprise, the federal government reneged on that and Oklahoma became one of the top states for the land grab. People came from the east in their covered wagons and took a piece of land to stake the claim. The Indian Territory slash Oklahoma Territory was quote-unquote organized, and that's when it became a state. So in 1907, it achieved statehood as a 46th state admitted to the Union. To this day, the indigenous population plays an important role in the state, with most of the population being in the northeastern portion of the state. But just like pretty much everywhere else in the U.S. that has a large indigenous population, the portion of that state that has the large indigenous population also is the poorest part of the state, and Oklahoma is no different. One of the things I like to discuss when doing these videos about the individual states is the food, and there are some pretty interesting signature dishes from Oklahoma. The first one I'll talk about are onion burgers, and it's exactly how it sounds. It's a big patty of meat grilled on a big bed of onions, and it gets all caramelized and in there pretty good. So if you like a really oniony burger, Oklahoma's the best place for it. Something else they have is smoked bologna, and I've never actually had it, but I love to try it because it sounds fantastic. It's bologna that's smoked. What could possibly go wrong with that? So next time I'm in Oklahoma, I definitely want to try some of the smoked bologna. And now for the controversial one. Chicken fried steak. Oklahoma claims it came from there. Texas claims it came from there. And I did some research and I wasn't able to corroborate which state it actually came from. They both put a pretty good claim to it. But whether it came from Texas or Oklahoma, it is part of the Oklahoma state meal and an important part of the state's cuisine. The next thing I want to talk about is the music of the state and some of the prominent musicians that call Oklahoma home. And as you might expect, a lot of country music legends come from the state. You've got Garth Brooks, Vince Gill, Toby Keith, Reba McIntyre, Blake Shelton, Carrie Underwood, Joe Diffie. So those are some pretty heavy hitters in the world of country music. It's also home to folk music legend Woody Guthrie. But in terms of rock bands, well, it's a good thing there's some good country legends that come from there because the rock scene from Oklahoma really isn't all that great. One of the most prominent rock bands from your state are the All-American Rejects and Hanson. Well, there's a problem there. So again, good thing a lot of country music stars come from there because the rock and roll scene there is not all that great. So those are the some of the things I wanted to discuss about Oklahoma. And I like the state. If I were to rank the 50 states in my personal favorite order, it'd be in the top half. But I do think it's overall an underappreciated state. You ask 100 Americans that aren't from there, what's the first thing you think of when you think of Oklahoma? Well, it's probably largely going to be negative type things like brown, dirt, boring, tornadoes, rednecks kind of stuff. But it isn't all like that. Of course, you can find all that stuff there, but it isn't all like that. So overall, it's a pretty well-rounded state. You've got some nice cities and some outdoors areas, and you've got fresh water and mountains. It's a very important state for energy. A lot of good things going on there. And it has smoked baloney. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up to let me know you approve. And if you're interested in stuff about U.S. geography, cross-country road tripping, ranking things, just nerdy stuff about geography, then this is the channel for you. So go ahead and subscribe. But yeah, thanks for watching. Geography King, signing out.